Hello everybody, uh, I'm here with the uh, continuation of the video that I had on the basic citation which was actually on the light board. That was uh, one of the two videos that you guys watched hopefully last week uh, on that Thursday where the school started after the crisis. So today what I want to show you uh, and this would be this, 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 uh, these videos that I'm going to uh, give you the link uh, later on hopefully on Monday uh, as an email, I will send you an email, uh, is intended for uh, lectures on Tuesday and Thursday. It would be a bunch of videos. Um, but anyways, um, uh, I want to talk about what we call force transmissibility uh, or the uh, force exerted by the base uh, to the mass. So remember, this was the example of the basic citation or the, the topic of basic citation. And uh, what I want to show you here first is a summary of what we covered uh, in, that, in those two videos. And then I want to, you know, talk about the, uh, the basic citation right here, uh, the uh, force excitation or the uh, force transmissibility rather. Okay, uh, so you guys remember that in a basic citation, actually the excitation coming from the base, you know, so the base here, uh, remember we talked about the example of a bumpy road, right? And why is uh, the excitation coming from the base, uh, you know, it's defined as uppercase Y sine omega Bt or cosine omega Bt for that. But sign, using sine for derivation was much easier, was more convenient. That's why sine was used. Okay, y, uppercase y is the amplitude of the base excitation, right? And omega b is the input frequency or frequency of the base. Okay, so y of t basically is your input. And the objective was to find x of t. And in particular, not the total solution, but rather just the particular solution, which is also known as the steady state solution. So you guys remember that we drew the free body diagram and we came up with the equations. And then in the, the second video on the light board, I showed you the format of uh, the solution. Uh, but just quickly, uh, if we assume a solution, a particular solution, which is also known as steady state. So SS here means a steady state. Some amplitude X times cosine or sine omega BT minus some phase angle beta, right? Then X is called the steady state amplitude, right? And then it, it could be shown that X is equal to Y, which is the amplitude of the uh, base excitation, equal to uh, this bracket, which involves frequency ratio and zeta. But be careful, guys. This whole thing is under a radical or raised to power one half, okay? So this whole expression, if you can put it under the radical if you want, but or you could raise it to, to power one half. Anyways. Remember, guys, frequency ratio is omega b over omega n, and zeta, you guys hopefully by now how to calculate that. All right, but it is more convenient to put it in the non-dimensional form, and um, you, uh, you guys remember that one of the reasons we put this in the non-dimensional form, then we could, you know, graphically show how uh, x over y will change as a frequency ratio, and then at frequency ratio one, you know, as you see what happens, you know, it, we reach kind of the peak and so on uh, for different value of zeta. But remember, there was an interesting thing about this. At root two, frequency ratio of root two, you guys remember, uh, there is a change. So basically, up to that point, uh, actually, this is starts at zero. Uh, the uh, the amplitude, if frequency ratio, and you, it was in the video, guys, I don't want to, you know, uh, confuse you. If R is less than root 2, you have an amplification. So remember, this X over Y is called what? It's called the amplification or the uh, displacement transmissibility. So if R is less than root 2, you are on this side, and therefore you do have an amplification. You see, X over Y is always larger than 1. Uh, but when uh, you are, when r is larger than root 2, then you are on this side, so r is, go, your x over y is going to be less than 1. So you do have no amplification. So just go back to the uh, video and review that. Anyways, back to here, guys. Uh, now, the objective is to talk about 
uh, the force transmissibility. Or in other words, we want to determine the amplitude of the force exerted by the base to the mass. So you guys remember, if you drew the free body diagram, and I have it in another video, these are basically the forces combination of the force of a spring and force of the damper. Mm -hmm. Or you could uh, just say uh, F equal M X double dot actually mass times acceleration in a way. But acceleration of what? X double dot of what? X double dot of the steady state solution. All right, if you go through that, you end up getting an expression. So F of T is what? F of T is called the amplitude, amplitude of the force. This F of T is called amplitude of the force. And that's equal to KY R squared times this expression. Now, the interesting thing is that if you take Y and multiply it by this bracket, by this bracket, Y times that this bracket, you see that? Y times this bracket is equal to what? X. So that's why underneath I said that uh, amplitude of the force transmissible uh, force uh, uh, applied to the base is equal to K R squared times X. And the interesting thing is that when R is 1, right, when R is equal to 1, then this amplitude of the force simply becomes K times X, which is basically the force of this spring, which is an interesting outcome. All right, guys, I'm going to come uh, uh, back with an, uh, quickly with an example of this, uh, uh, of uh, this concept, both for... Uh, uh, displacement transmissivity and also the uh, force transmissivity or amplitude of the force. I hope I haven't confused you here, but uh, we're going to have office hours later on, virtual office hours, hopefully on Zoom, and then I would answer any questions. Thanks for watching and listening.